Please welcome Dr. Michael Ramsey. It's a really great honor, as Don Berwick said during his talk, uh, to recognize uh, Professor Najmadin Meshkati, uh, who's here and is going to be the next speaker. Uh, he's also a member of our board on the Patient Safety Movement Foundation, which is just a great honor for us. He's Professor of Civil and Environmental Engineering, Industrial and Systems Engineering um, at the University of Southern California. But I think more importantly, he's got an extensive background in risk reduction and the reliability enhancement of complex technological systems within industries such as nuclear power, aviation, petrochemical industry, and transportation. And so he's investigated many of the biggest world's disasters that um, you would know of, like Chernobyl, Fukushima, um, real more recently Boeing. Um, and uh, he's also a commissioner on the Joint Commission. Uh, so he lends his expertise to healthcare as well. So with that, uh, Professor Mashkati, uh, we'd like to introduce you. Please welcome Dr. Naj Mashkati. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's really an honor and a pleasure for me to be here before all of you. I wish I could see you, but uh, these uh, uh, lights uh, prevent me from that. Uh, as uh, Dr. Ramsey mentioned, I come from a different background and a different uh, experience and pedigree. I'm an engineer and a kind of a simple-minded engineer, but what I would like to do within the next uh, 14 minutes here just to share with you some of my observation, which I call that personal observation, and my story uh, in the last 39 years that I've been in this business. I give you a little bit overview about what I have done, and then I move to the, uh, my work related to patient safety. I hope I can pack all of this in 14 minutes and 10 seconds. Uh, one of the very important characteristic, one of the defining characteristic of my work has been basically it's a, I work with safety critical system, meaning if something goes wrong in this system, it harms the patient, it kills the passengers, and also in the case of Chernobyl, it will have an important effect on the environment and all the way to the neighboring country. The other important thing is interdisciplinary. I work with doctors, anesthesiologists, and uh, perfusionist. In fact, when I came to the podium this morning, or this uh, right now, and this morning when I was here, I saw my senior colleague, Dr. Phil Lamp, Dr. Berwick, and others. I felt like I'm going to give my qualifying exam for PhD. That's what if I'm a little shaky on that, please apologize when I see Dr. Lamp and Dr. Berwick, who have been very nice to me in the room, is because of that. But I've been very interdisciplinary. And the other thing that I would like to tell you is what I have done is cross-cutting, meaning what I learned from aviation is applicable to nuclear, from nuclear to patient safety and hospital, from hospitals to, to deep water drilling, and again to mining and others. And uh, for the last 39 years, I have worked with nuclear power industry, petrochemical, refining, oil and gas pipeline, offshore drilling, aviation, railroad, maritime, coal mining, and the last uh, 25 years or so with healthcare industry. What I would like to show you to you now is some still picture of some of these industries so that you get a feel for what I've been there, what I've done, and then through that I'll give you some examples of what of my observation. I started by looking at the Three Mile Island accident of 1979 because it was caused by operator error overload, and th in the morning panel we heard about uh, alarm management. 1,600 warning lights went out in the control room. They looked like, they said, control room looked like Christmas tree. Uh, the other uh, event and accident that I didn't go there, the rest of these I've been personally been there and, uh, and work on that. This one I've written papers. This is that Bhopal chemical plant that killed 2,000 people and injured 200,000. Uh, the other one is Chernobyl. Of course, I've been there, I've visited there, written a lot about that. It's considered to be the largest industrial accident in the history of the planet. The other one that I was a member of the expert panel working with the U.S. Chemical Safety Board is the 
BP Texas City refinery explosion killed 18 people, injured 180. Again, the root cause of that was human factor safety culture, which has been the root cause of the other accident that I said before, or the others that I will be talking about that. BP Departor Horizon, I was a member of uh, National Academy of Engineering Investigation Committee. Again, the role of regulator, the problem with the design of the rig, the design of the control room, and many other safety factors and safety culture issues with BP Transocean and Halliburton. The other one is, of course, Fukushima. I was a member of National Academy of Science investigation panel. We went to Fukushima, Daiichi, and Daiichi. In fact, Fukushima was a man-made accident, and we try to reflect that in our reports over there. Then if you add some aviation accident, I've been involved in some of this, uh, investigating that, and uh, this was Tenerife, uh, uh, the runway incursion that killed 573 people in Tenerife. The other one, Avianca airline that ran out of fuel, uh, crashed uh, near New York airport. A uh, Korean airline in Guam. Uh, I wanna summarize some of this because the most important one is this very last one. Uh, the two crashes of 737 that killed 314 between them. I was honored to be appointed as a congressional mandated study of the uh, FAA. And we spent a lot of time on that. We reviewed 4,000 pages of document, interviewed 250 Boeing employees, visited six facilities of Boeing. I myself interviewed Boeing CEO and uh, some board members and that, and when this morning I heard about the importance of the board member, I cannot agree more with that. If we had competent, knowledgeable board member about safety and human factors, the multiple characteristic augmentation system on Boeing would not have been designed, tested, or launched, or installed. The role of board members, this is one of my takeaway from my one year pro bono work, which I spent many a sleepless night on the Boeing case. I've been to many nuclear plants around the world and recently being appointed to Diablo Canyon Independent Safety Committee. What I'm trying to say is what I learned from this industry is applicable to this industry of healthcare. Please take it from me. And I try to show some examples. This is the control room of Chernobyl. This is Mihama nuclear plant in Japan that had a steam generator tube rupture which was one of the most important accidents in Japan before uh, Fukushima. This is uh, yours truly in Fukushima Daiichi plant. As you see, I'm not an armchair general and I put Tyvek suit and face mask because it was high radiation area. This is uh, Fukushima Daini underneath the reactor core. It was a boiling water reactor. That's why they push the rods from the bottom. This is the BP refinery. BP had many accidents. This is the BP refinery accident investigation. I would like you to look at the lower left hand side. The out of four root causes is the two that I have been working with in the last 39 years. Safety culture and human factors. And again, I was glad to see Dr. Marcus Shaker Baker talk about the importance of human factors. That was a music to my ear. Uh, this accident could have been prevented had the issue of cumulative fatigue, human factor, safety culture being addressed in that. Of course, BP Departure Horizon of 2010, and uh, this is yours truly next to the blowout preventer that didn't, didn't work, which again, because of the preventive maintenance, lack of uh, pre uh, preventive uh, uh, mechanism that look at the integrity of the system. This is that infamous drill bit that blind shear ram wasn't able to cut it, and it's being stored in a Navy site in, in Louisiana. I have done some work in healthcare thanks to mentors like Dr. Philip Lum and others, and with some of my students. I work on design of medical equipment, perfusion pump. This is your truly in an open heart surgery uh, in one hospital looking at the operation of uh, a perfusion pump work in the user interface design and that, and design the whole workstation and that. And uh, I also worked with, under this supervision of Dr. Lam, with my former doctoral student, and some brilliance of them are here, on uh, USC Keck Hospital, 
You will see a familiar name over there, Dr. Sanaz Masumi, that I'm very proud of her, Dr. Yalda Khashe, that she's here. I'm very proud of her. She wrote, by the way, a seminar paper on uh, telemedicine and human-computer interaction with Dr. Uh, Maryam Tabibzadeh, that who is here. Maryam wrote also a very interesting paper last year on uh, retention of the foreign object during surgery that Dr. Lam and colleagues at Patient Safety Foundation and Movement Foundation and Joint Commission liked that a lot. Okay, some recent work which is very important, I think, for this audience is the FAA expert panel. On the FAA expert panel, we released a report on February 26, has uh, 27 recommendations, 27 findings, 53 recommendations. One of them which is very important for your industry and I think is directly applicable to this industry is we observed that there was a disconnect between Boeing executive and managers with uh, their uh, troops, basically. And the other more important observation that we put that in our executive uh, summary and also is in the body of that is this recommendation, that there are five components of the safety culture. Boeing had only a fixation on just culture. Just culture is one of the five elements of the uh, safety culture. And we pointed out to Boeing. The, we heard a lot about this great seminal report. This is President Council of uh, Science and Technology Advisor on Patient Safety. This is a beautiful report. I suggest all of you to download and read that. Dr. Bervik mentioned that. Mr. Kiani mentioned that. Dr. Dorkin mentioned that. This report is excellent. However, on recommendation two, it has also says only just culture. I hope that they learn from this report from Boeing and look at all components of safety culture. And I hope the version 2.0 of that, they, they, they fix that issue. All of this experience taught me one lesson that I think is very applicable to, to you, which I call that the hot model, human organization technological subsystem. I consider any one of these systems that I worked on that or your hospital as a composition of these three subsystems. Human are the human element, nurses, perfusionists, doctors, surgeons, anesthesiologists. Organization is that entity that puts all of this together, develop the schedule. By the way, the role of a schedule in wrong side surgery is very important, according to central events of Joint Commission. That schedule, preventive maintenance, corrective maintenance is done by that subsystem. The third subsystem is the hardware and software, the equipment that we use, the perfusion pump that we use, the anesthesiology workstation that we use. I consider these three as the three links in a chain. And as you know, the integrity of a chain is depending on the integrity of the weakest link. That's what if we want to increase, and of course these three, they interact with each other. If we want to increase the integrity, the safety and performance of the chain and carry that volume of output all the time, we need to give equal and adequate attention to these three links in the chain. If we give our lion's share to technology at the expense of the two other links, still the chain is going to break at that weakest link. That's why I became an advocate of human factors and safety culture. And uh, why safety culture is important, I want to finish with this uh, two or three more slides. I, this is my understanding. I think safety culture can be analogized to an immune system in human body. Most of you know much better than me about that. And the same way that the immune system tries to fence off diseases and pathogen, a healthy safety culture. This is a terminology that American nuclear industry uses, and there is a document by U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission Institute of uh, 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 IMPO, Institute of Nuclear Power Operation, that they call that healthy safety culture. They list an 11 elements. By the way, psychological safety that we have heard is only one element of the healthy safety culture. There are 10 other elements like 
questioning attitude, procedures, communication, and others. I love to hear more about psychological safety. I love Dr. Amy Emerson at Harvard, but this is only one element of safety culture based on the American nuclear industry. And by the way, that has been used a lot. And the other thing is we need to make sure that we are nurturing this and, and boosting the safety culture like the, like the COVID um, vaccine that we got, it, it boosted. That line in, in red, which is by my mentor, Professor Jim Reason, is extremely important. That it is basically affects all element in the system. It could work as a common mode failure if you have a healthy safety culture. This is Jim Reason said in this book, and I want you, if you like to get the book, it's fantastic. What I would like to say, if you look at the NASA document, they use the DNA metaphor, but they have the list of the five elements of the safety culture over here. Just is only one of them. And then if you look at American Airlines, what my friends over there, and uh, Miss Bobby Wells, vice president, they did, safety culture at American Airlines is the foundation of safety management system and anything else. And I think American Airlines should be saluted for what they have done on that. I think that is, uh, as I said, the best way that I could say really safety culture and improvement of the safety culture is the foundation, is the must. If you have a shaky or wobbly safety culture, everything else that you build on that as a superstructure is going to fall. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation.